You got yourself a steel MS-182C chainsaw. Hey guys, Josh with Carl's Mower and Saw, and today we're gonna go over the basics of what you need to know to use this saw safely, to start it efficiently, to protect the engine and get long, efficient, wonderful life out of this without pulling your hair out in frustration. So you got this cool manual, and if you're like a lot of us, you browse through it, and some of it sticks and some of it doesn't. Or if you're like a lot of us, you, you read it and you read all these warnings and these warnings are important, right? They're trying to protect you and you get to the important stuff and it, you throw it out the window. So here we go, the MS-182C chainsaw. Before we dig into the saw itself, I do wanna get into some of the warnings, some of the safety stuff that we need to know about that you should be aware of. Uh, first off, this is a chainsaw and it can do some serious damage. That can happen via, you know, unintentionally cutting of a leg or kickback. So always recommend to wear chaps with the chainsaw. These suckers will stop that chain in, I don't know, sub two seconds. It's crazy fast. I have seen them work. I've, I've actually had them work for me. Let's not talk about that. But anyways, uh, chainsaw chain two leg with chaps, that chain will stop so fast and avoid major damage. Still will get a cut more than likely, but not bad. So chaps, as well as something to protect our eyes, our ears, our face, our head. One way to do that is with the helmet. This Promark helmet works very well. So it's gonna give me everything all in one. Uh, if I'm cutting stuff where limbs could be falling, helmet's good. I got my ear protection as well as my face mask. If you're not into wearing a full helmet, definitely wear the earmuffs and definitely wear some safety glasses. So think about that stuff uh, as you go into using this chainsaw. All right, next, let's talk about fuel. So this is a two cycle machine, which means traditionally we're going to mix gasoline with oil. So steel uses uh, their HP Ultra Oil. It's mixed at a 50 to one uh, ratio. We highly recommend using an ethanol free fuel. We found over and over and over again, just going and buying normal pump gas that contains up to 10% or sometimes even higher uh, ratings of ethanol, that damage uh, can happen to your fuel system. So try to avoid ethanol. If that is hard for you, or if you are a, you know, not a heavy user, somebody who's gonna put on five hours a year, 10 hours a year, you may want to consider Moto Mix. This, is, this has become very popular. They sell it in quarts and gallons. It is a wonderful way to go. This has a significantly longer shelf life than normal gasoline. It is blended specifically to run in steel chainsaws. Once I crack the lid, I have two years out of this stuff. It's a 93 octane, ethanol free, something that we can't get at the pumps around us. I've been told that you know around the world there are places that sell 93 octane ethanol free, but okay. That fuel is going to go right in this cap and steel has these flip caps. I'm gonna flip up, give it a quarter turn, pull it out, put in my fuel, my premix or my mixed from the can. And then in this cap right here is my bar oil. Okay, so that's gonna pull out and I'm gonna put in bar oil. And bar oil is important. I'm not just gonna get used motor oil or go buy some 30 weight or some 1030. I wanna bar oil as it is thicker, it is tackier, and it's gonna hold on to that chain through the whole rotation all the way out to the tip of the bar and then back in. So bar oil and mix oil. Every time I fill the fuel, I fill the bar oil, okay? That's a good rule of thumb. This bar oil should never run out if you do it that way. But if you don't do it every time, you will run out of bar oil and suddenly you will heat your chain up, you'll stretch your chain, things will get tight, your bar doesn't like it, all kinds of things. Okay, next, let's talk about starting this machine, then we're gonna get into maintenance, talking about how to put the chain on and, and some of those sort of things. So starting this machine, once it has fuel in it, and I'm not going to start this one up, I'm sorry, I have uh, somebody coming to purchase this and I don't wanna start it up before they get here. So I will have put fuel in, and then I'm gonna pump this button, this primer, one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm gonna squeeze the trigger and push all the way down on this lever. This is called their master control lever right here, and it is now in choke. I'm now going to either leg lock or put it on the ground, okay? This has the easy start. This is awesome. All I have to do is pull. I don't have to rip hard. 
So beings that I have a primer and a choke, this is gonna start super easy. So usually on the first pull it fires, okay? Sometimes it's two, but more than likely after that first pull, you're gonna hear a boom, and it's gonna try to start, some people call it a burp, a fart, a sputter, whatever, a little pop. If you don't hear it by the second pull, stop. Okay, and then at that point in time, what we're gonna do is take this master control lever and move it up one notch to the start position. Now back way up, I just got ahead of myself. I talked about safety, okay, and I'm talking about starting. I always wanna start this chainsaw with the brake on. So this machine has a brake. Watch this chain, I can spin it by hand, right? That's what we want. When we're cutting wood, we want that chain to be able to spin. If I push this lever forward, the brake is now on, okay? This realistically should only come on if the saw either kicks back, boom, or has an inertia pushback. So this is an inertia activated brake also. So usually the only reason this will engage inadvertently, uh, aside from you doing it, is in an accident prevention situation. But I always like to use this brake when I'm starting the saw or when I'm moving around with the saw. So if I've made some cuts over here and I wanna go over you know, to my left, I'm gonna hit the brake and I'm gonna carry it over. I'm gonna take the brake off, which comes off by pulling it backwards and make my cuts. So when I go to start it, brake on, all right? Now, back to it, right? We primed it, we choked it, we pulled it once or twice. We've moved the master control lever up to the start position. And now I, again, leg lock and pull, boom, it's running. And it's running at about half throttle. So it's going, boom, and I have the brake on. So I need to now immediately click the trigger. I don't know if you heard that, that little click. And that was the throttle moving up to idle, okay? So now it's idling, it's warming up. Let this sucker warm up while you get ready. Maybe you're walking out to the wood pile um, and letting it warm up, and then we can go to work with it. On this master control lever, I lift it up, it shuts it off, and it returns back to run. So if I've killed it, so I've killed the machine and I want to restart and it's warm. I simply set the brake again, just from a safety standpoint, and pull the rope, boom, it's gonna fire up. Okay, so we know how to start it. We know about the brake. We know about some of that safety stuff on top of. This does have the easy start. So pro tip, don't rip this like an old chainsaw. So if you're, a, if you're used to chainsaws and you're not new to chainsaws and you started chainsaws for the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and you've ripped on them forever, if you do that to this, you will do damage. It's with this easy start, I just have to pull. And let me tell you, it is game changing. It's not for everybody, but for people that their shoulders are going out and they can't pull a rope anymore, maybe they've broken a hand and they've got some serious arthritis going on and they can't, they just can't rip like that. So just a nice, easy pull. All right, let's talk about chain tensioning. And on this saw, my chain tensioner is not done with a traditional bar wrench, like so. I have a bar nut right here, and I'm gonna loosen my bar nut, and this black knob right here is my chain tensioner. So there's my bar nut, and this is the screw that I would normally turn. So if you look, let me turn it back a little bit. My chain is loose, like that, and I wanna tighten it. I simply roll this out, okay? Roll it out to the end. Chain looks good. Tighten that back up. Now, how do I change the chain? Well, I simply loosen this all the way. This cover comes off and it looks a little different. This is what I'm turning with that black dial, okay? I'm gonna spin this back and now I've completely slacked off the chain. I can pull the chain off and throw a new chain on. A couple little pro tips I wanna point out here. So let me take this bar and chain off. One is one of the negatives of this, if I can say there's a negative, yeah, we'll say there's a negative, is that people don't rotate their bar. So the high wear part on your bar is actually right here. That's the highest wear, because as that chain comes around, it's whipping there. But your bar is also getting worn across the whole bottom. So you should actually rotate your bar, every new chain rotating the bar. Well, when this piece is on, people neglect to do that. So it's easy to change flip to the other side. I'm going to take a flat head and I'm going to loosen this little screw and there's only one screw in there and I'm going to take this screw loose. I should be sitting on the table because I know I'm going to lose this sucker. 
I just know it. It's gonna go flying off. So screw comes loose. I'm gonna go back, sorry. And I'm gonna simply take this piece and I'm gonna move it to the other side of the bar, right? So I'm gonna move it to this side right here is what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna put that screw back in. That's it, so now I've rotated the bar. If you don't do it, I get it, it happens. Maybe you don't use a saw enough that it matters. I do want you to check occasionally the, how tight that screw is. I've seen those back off and what'll happen is you end up with kind of this, this little gear mechanism being loose and a little sloppy and it does mess with your chain tensioning. So if you pull the bar and chain off, it's a good idea to check that single screw in the back, tighten that up good, okay? And again, there is only one screw. I have people come in, there's two holes. I'm missing a screw. Nope, you're not. Just tighten that one screw. Now, let's talk about kind of the next step. We've talked about fuel and using an ethanol free. We've talked about bar oil. We've talked about some of the safety, how to start it. Let's talk a little bit about some of the maintenance you need to do. And the key maintenance is good gas, right? But on top of that, we are going to have an air filter that's going to get dirty, you know, a uh, sprocket that can get you know you can build up a bunch of debris in here so it's a good idea to take the cover off clean this once in a while if you're really into uh, chainsaw stuff you can pull this clip off pull the clutch drum off and grease the bearing um, most people don't do that don't need to do that and in fact when they do do that they cause more problems so we'll just kind of ignore that part of it but let's get a look at the air filter I've pre-loosened there's one two three screws and off this cover comes and I've exposed the top of the engine. And now we can see my air filter right here. And this air filter is clipped on. So if I take right here and lift up, my air filter comes off. It is in hand. I can wash this with soap and water, warm soapy water, letting it dry out. Don't use compressed air to blow it out. You'll take these felt fibers and expand them and allow dirt to go through past the air filter and into the intake and then crushing your saw. Okay, we have our spark plug right here on the top. So I can take this spark plug boot off. These are always very tight. So you wanna kinda of wiggle it off. Sometimes I'll actually get a screwdriver under and pry as I wiggle. And that, if you don't do that, what'll happen is you can actually pop the boot off of the spark plug wire, pull the, the spark plug lead, little wire on there off, and you'll have this spark plug boot in your hand and nothing to connect to the spark plug. So there's my spark plug right there. How often should I change my spark plug? I'm gonna recommend that it, for most people that buy this saw, it's probably every two or three years. It doesn't hurt to do it annually, honestly. Um, they're fairly cheap, it's simple, it's easy, and it doesn't hurt, right? But most people, the amount of hours they're gonna put on this, two to three years. Air filter, I'm gonna try to check that uh, every once a year for most users, if you're using it heavy, right? If you're going out and you're putting several hours on in a month, you should just check it every time. It's easy enough to pull that off and take a peek at it. And then on top of that, maintenance would be occasionally cleaning this out. So this is a good place if you do have compressed air with the filter on, okay, to blow out this area to keep it clear of sawdust buildup and that sort of stuff so it can cool. And then on top of that, you would have a fuel filter once in a while, and that sucker's hiding in the tank with an empty fuel tank. Pull the cap off, fish that fuel filter out, and replace the fuel filter. And I would say, again, kind of like a spark plug, doing that every two to three years in a homeowner application is more than suffice, especially if I'm putting in good mix. Okay, there we go, the steel MS-182C in a nutshell. Some of the cool features this has is the easy start system, the quick chain adjuster, uh, a great anti-vibration system, the primer for easy starts. Enjoy your saw, do what I've talked about, and you should have this saw for many, many, many years to come. I'll tell you, at Carl's Mower and Saw, we've been selling a model very similar to this uh, since, for over 20 years, pushing 25 years. We still have some of the original gangsters out cutting wood for people. We fully expect this to be a saw that is, is out there for 15, 20 years, potentially passed on to the next uh, generation for cleaning up around the property. So enjoy your steel MS-182 chainsaw. For more tips, tricks, 
To learn more about Steel Products, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we look forward to seeing you soon in store at Carl's Mower and Saw.